On September 1, 1859, scientist Richard Carrington, an English astronomer, observed a massive solar flare accompanied by a coronal mass ejection from the sun that released a tremendous amount of energy and plasma material into space directly to Earth. That day brought some scary and amazing events altogether that it was famously called the Carrington Event. Richard Carrington was focused on understanding the working mechanism of the sun. He determined the sun's two poles by its rotational axis and was the first to learn that the sun doesn't rotate as a solid body. In fact, it is a fluid body state having solar materials and that the solar material near the sun's equator goes faster than near the poles. He saw sunspots, solar flares, and coronal mass ejections, but he didn't know what was emanating from the sun's surface at that time until the 20th century. On the first day of September, when looking through the telescope to observe the sunspots, he saw a flash of bright light from the sun's surface. He was fascinated and curious. Then later, he admitted a report to the Royal Astronomical Society. Unexpectedly, he didn't get the attention he needed from his findings and moved on. The very next day, sailors got lost in the ocean while sailing towards their destination due to malfunction of their compass needles. The telegraph network experienced signal disruptions where some of the telegraph line distributions got on fire. Everyone felt scared and anxious. People across the Caribbean and Mexico saw auroras and lots of birds in the sky, which was unexpected since this happens only in the far north. Near the northern latitude, there were multitude reports of people getting electric shocks touching metallic materials, whatever maybe it is, from doorknobs to any electric machines. Some people got unconscious and even had a case of partial body paralysis due to the electric shock. The event finally was understood by the people that it was a massive geomagnetic storm from the sun which headed towards Earth from day one and reached on day two of September. So we know that the solar flares and coronal mass ejections have something to do as was observed by Sir Carrington. Do you know what solar flares and coronal mass ejections are? If not, let me explain briefly. Solar flares are huge explosions of electromagnetic radiation from the sun. Solar flares are formed when the intense magnetic fields near the surface get messy or entangled to each other, reaching to a point of maximum stress where it finally snaps, releasing tons of energy as in the form of electromagnetic radiation out to space. While the coronal mass ejections are plasma materials having intense magnetic fields, like the solar flares under stress, they snap and therefore get ejected out to space too. These two originate from the same sunspots, where the sunspots are areas of cooler temperature than the rest of the surface and also are areas of having more intense magnetic fields than from the rest of the surface. Talking about how intense it is, it can be as 2,500 times stronger than the Earth's magnetic fields. Most of the sunspots occur near its equator, mostly in the latitude 30 degrees north and south. Most of the effects of a geomagnetic storm comes from coronal mass ejection. So here's the scientific explanation for what happened at the Carrington event. The coronal mass ejection took place suddenly after the solar flare it got created from the same sunspot. It took almost a whole day, which is 18 hours to reach near the Earth's vicinity. When the coronal mass ejections encounter the Earth's magnetosphere, which is the surrounding region of the Earth holding the planet's magnetic field, the coronal mass ejection and Earth's magnetic fields start to interact with each other. Most of the Earth's magnetic field deflects out pretty good solar winds, forming a protective barrier around the planet. But in the case of coronal mass ejection, which is an extreme solar wind, it compresses Earth's magnetosphere and triggers magnetic reconnection. Magnetic reconnection occurs when the magnetic field lines from the solar wind connect with Earth's magnetic field lines and reconfigures the strength and the shape of the Earth's magnetosphere. And by going through that process, releases the energy stored in the magnetic field. The energy released accelerates the charged particles in Earth's magnetosphere and ionosphere, which leads up to a buildup of energy and disturbances in the magnetosphere and ionosphere. It causes changes in the strength of the magnetic fields, which results in inducing powerful electric currents in the Earth crust and the ionosphere. This is where the telegraph lines got a surge amount of electric power disrupting the telegraph network worldwide. 
also is the reason why the telegraph operators reported receiving electric shocks and electric sparks. And a weird thing happened. The equipment got itself an artificial power source produced in the lines from induced currents even after removing the connection from the main electric source for power supply. The geomagnetic storm led to the creation of widespread auroras from the northern or southern side, all the way to areas around the globe at latitude 20 degrees, such as the Mexico and the Caribbean. Auroras are caused by the energetic charged particles from the solar wind, colliding with atmospheric gases, producing colorful displays of light in the sky. Now, going back to the energy released in the magnetic field, was estimated to be 16 quadrillion joules of energy. That is more like the amount of energy the sun releases in 10 seconds out to space. For a more scary comparison, it is equivalent to a 10 megaton nuclear bomb released, knowing that a Hiroshima bomb had only 18 kilotons of nuclear bomb released, which is 500 times short in energy when compared. Hearing all of these scenarios makes it very uncomfortable. But are you prepared enough for what's going to happen if this ever occurred today in 2024? Follow part two of this video to know.